Hello everyone and welcome back to New Horizons, where we started the very daunting task of converting this plain old valley into hopefully a legendary base. At least that's the plan anyway. And to get there it's going to take many hundreds of hours, maybe even thousands of hours of grind. Are you guys with me? Great, I am very glad to hear that, let's jump in. I do know, for a fact, there will be a lot of chickens in the making of this episode. Can you guys guess why that might be? <laughs> All will be revealed later in the episode, but for now I really want to get this rocket silo built. I did not do it between episodes, and this will be built in the next, I don't know, 3 minutes maybe? Like, yeah, let's just say 3 minutes. And you know what, I'm so confident in that actually, let's put a timer on it. 3 minutes starts now. Oh come on Enderman, really? Now, <laughs> now is not the time to give us slowness. We are on the clock here. Oh nice, he dropped his head. Before we get onto the building though, we start off with a problem. You guys know how much I enjoy these Boots of the Traveller, right? We use these things everywhere and you can tell by the durability we need to fix this. So first of all, for the research, it's in the Thomic Tinkering tab. We first need Gaseous Illumine. That leads into Hyper Energetic Nitor. Then into the Essentia Funnel. And finally, the item we want, the Thomic Restorer. Which, of course, is another arcane infusion, so we have a bunch of running around to do to gather all of the materials and the Essentia. However, fortunately, after running back to gather some more woven cotton, I think we have all of the rest of the materials already set up here. We got some Precantatio, Potentia, Fabrico, Instrumentum, and Ordo. Let's also ensure these pedestals are symmetrical. That's very important for the infusion. And yeah, it seems like we've been doing a lot of infusion crafts recently, right? I think this might be the last item we need though for the foreseeable future. Okay, it looks like we're good for stability. Have at it, Filmcraft. So to get the Restorer to actually function and be able to repair the Boots of the Traveller, we do need the Instrumentum Essentia. And the best way to get the Instrumentum is with Rubber Rounds. It's a very clean source of Instrumentum. Aha, that was quick. The Thomic Restorer. Let's scan it. And do we have any Essentia tubes here? We do, perfect. Yeah, we can connect up the Instrumentum, place inside the Boots of the Traveller, and it should use the Essentia to repair the boots, or effectively any other item we want to put in there. It does say that it's looking for Perdicio, I think that is. I'm not sure why it's listed wrong, but it, it is Instrumentum, according to the Thomonomicon, and that is actually what works here. Oh wow, that is chewing through the Instrumentum. Fortunately, Instrumentum is cheap, but yeah. Fully repaired Boots of the Traveller. Alright, with that taken care of, let's transform this place. How are we doing for this timer, by the way? Did I fail? <laughs> I have no idea. Did we overshoot the mark? I'm not sure. Anyways, let's build this thing. Oh yeah, I absolutely love this Schematica mod. It's so fun to use. There is a few quirks with it though, in that you can't place the architecture blocks, as we suspected last episode. I mean, you can place them, but uh, it doesn't place them the right way, 99% of the time. And this thing fits perfectly, look at this place. I'm very happy I got this thing built. And you know, one of the things I've noticed about myself actually, it's a flaw that I really want to address. Yeah, so I, I think I've identified that I tend to have a lot of plates spinning at once. So, you know, we could have easily designed this thing in creative and just left it there for the foreseeable future. However, with the massive scale of this valley project, with so much to do, I think the best approach to take would be to try to get as many permanent features in as we can, as we go along. 
That type of approach will slow down our progress overall, but honestly I think it's going to be best to try to avoid situations like we have out here. Yeah, this place out here is just a complete mess. What I'm trying to say though is that if we're not careful, that could become the fate of the valley down there. And that is something that is just not going to happen. We're not going to let that happen. I'm going to try my best. And besides, I'm having so much more fun playing this way anyway. So yeah, I think I enjoy the building aspect just as much as the Greg Tech and automation side of things. There is something just so magical about seeing your builds come to life in this game. And that sounds like such a childish thing to say, I know, but it's true. So now that we've built a rocket silo, I think now is an appropriate time to start the space race. Honestly, it's been a few days for me, so I don't know what the state of our resources are. I have been throwing things in several machines every now and then. Uh, some of these, some of these chests do need cleaned out. I'll do that today, I think. Alright, so the very next part of progression for us is going to be the next tier of Circuit Assembler. The Advanced Circuit Assembler 2, HV. Oh no. Oh, no way. This, guys, this is why I hear spiders. Is it through the roof? It is. <laughs> oh, this is not good. All the barrels exploded. Are you kidding me? And the chests? Oh, where's the chest? <laughs> <laughs> the next part in progression for us is the, is the Advanced Circuit Assembler 2, HV. Yeah, so I loaded a backup, it was this spot right here that got us. The backup was only from like 10 minutes before, so I think that's totally fair. <laughs> so the brand new HV Circuit Assembler takes the place of the former LV Circuit Assembler, which is technically not needed anymore. Then, using our last four EV workstations, we were able to craft the first two IV mainframes. The first new circuit we've had in quite a while, I believe. And this also opens the Space Race tab and prompts us to build the NASA workbench. Oh, and if you guys have seen the previous episode, this thing right here, the hint, we already planned ahead. <laughs> it's talking about the Nether Star duplication, which we actually pulled off a few episodes back. And in fact, we should have Nether Star plates here in our system. Yeah, we have eight and we need six. Oh, you know what we didn't account for, though, is the fact that we need EV circuits for these robot arms. And three of these robot arms go into the NASA workbench, plus a bunch of HV components, the sensor... Oh, this is no fun. <laughs> I remember this. I remember this recipe. Is there anything else here that's going to catch us off guard, though? The display, LV circuits, polyethylene, we've got all of this. We can manage this. It's going to be a lot of crafting. What is this? Uh, HV assembling machine? Okay. I didn't remember this being in the recipe. HV assembling machine, that's two more HVs. Plus some hard wall is concrete and energetic alloy. Oh, and of course, that's inside a chemical bath at MV. We don't have that yet. And apparently we don't have the materials to craft it either. How many HVs do we... Okay, we have five. Uh, well, I guess I'll see you guys in about two hours' time. Here we go. So the NASA workbench is far from the only thing we need to get this rocket in the air. We also need some onboard guidance systems, and those will consist of a computer case and a keyboard from open computers, a display, a sensor, an emitter, all of those things we should have crafted here. We also, by the way, have the materials for the NASA workbench, and in that, as we know, is the assembling machine at HV. You may notice here that the final recipe for the control computer has to be done inside an HV assembling machine, inside a clean room. So before we assemble the NASA bench, I want to plug this HV assembling machine in here. Just double check it is HV. Yes, it is. So yeah, emitter, sensor, keyboard, computer case, display, which I left in here, solder and alloy, and the final item right here, Galactocraft heavy duty plates. Uh oh. Oh no, and for the rocket, we also need another, what, eight? And for the rocket fins, we need another 16. 
And for the engines, we need another four. Yeah, we need a lot of these heavy duty plates and it's used in every single rocket. In fact, you know what? It's even used in some of the lander stuff. Some of the components are used in the lander, which we still have to craft here. So we are still quite a ways away from the rocket, but how do we get these heavy duty plates? They are made inside one of the best multi-blocks in GT actually, the implosion compressor. And I think it's gonna be cheap enough, honestly. Uh, it's just basically a bunch of steel and HV circuits. Along with these casing blocks, which are steel and wet concrete in a chemical bath. Reinforced stone is what it's called. And because it's a multi-block, we'll need all of the usual gizmos, the input bus, output bus. Fortunately, we have a few spares here we can use. Maintenance hatch, energy hatch. Do we not have an energy hatch anyway? Oh, we do. It's right here. Muffler hatch. And we're not going to be handling fluids with this, so I, I think this is going to be perfectly fine. And there should be a quest for this in the multi-blocks tab. Yeah, over here, compress all the things. It's, it looks like the casing is solid steel machine casing. Do we have any of those by chance? We have 22. I don't remember why we use these things. Ah. Huh. Oh, you know what? Potentially, I think that's how we make these LCR casings. Yeah, that's exactly where we got them from. All right, so the reinforced stone, some extra HV circuits, which I had just finished crafting. I think that leaves us with only a few, only two left. I probably should have made more, to be honest. But for now, we can craft the implosion compressor. So maintenance hatch, input bus, output bus, controller in the middle. I'm missing a casing. Controller in the middle. Let's do some maintenance with the toolbox. Still has problems, circuitry again. And yes, it is soldering, not soldering. I know, speak Americano. Okay, maintenance performed. This thing is running, we are ready to go, right? Oh no, things are not that easy. We are gonna have to do some science. So, so we're gonna ignore the fact that it just took me like two hours to gather those machines. So to get this compressor running, we need a steady supply of explosives. Either TNT, ITNT, powder barrel, or dynamite. And the one we're gonna go for is industrial TNT, ITNT. And I actually just had the most genius idea. We're gonna make a large chemical reactor here. Oh yeah, and we were also missing the PTFE pipe casing, is that what it's called? Yeah, this thing right here. If this way doesn't work though, I'm gonna be so sad because it is genius. <laughs> You'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, so pipe casing, Cooper nickel coil. We have to run this thing at HV. So HV energy hatch, turbo gas turbine. We have all of the input hatches in the front. The rest is just gonna be casing. Okay, perfect. We have a large chemical reactor. We also have a fluid solidifier, a mixer, and a chemical reactor, a single block chemical reactor. Oh, and you know what? I just realized this is only, this is only MV. That could have been, <laughs> that could have been trouble right there. Let's get an HV mixer. And doing it this way keeps things simple. We're only working with two tiers of power. We have an LV fluid solidifier and the rest is all HV. Okay, so the recipe for industrial TNT, there's basically two inputs. Nitration mixture and gel toluene. Let's start with the gel toluene. That is actually the easy part of this. I mean, it's easy for us because we already have our benzene set up over here. And one of these tanks should be full of to that's phenol. That's benzene. This one here, aha, is toluene. Perfect. So all we have to do with this is send it through the fluid solidifier. Let's grab a spare tank and also a spare pump to insert. Our very last LV. LV should be fine. I was also making a ball mold, which is what we need. So yeah, we'll do a tank on the bottom of the fluid solidifier. We'll just manually import toluene. And if we give it a ball mold, we give it a gas turbine on the back. And also some benzene, of course, for power. We should see that this thing is going to start to make us gel toluene. So the first part of this is the easy bit. Let's actually grab a drawer. Yeah, we'll output this to a drawer right here. That's facing the wrong way. There we go. You know what? I also just realized the whole thing is too far back. The chunk boundary is right there and it would have crossed it. So just to be safe, I'm going to move it forward one block. Okay, we got everything moved forward. We're making gel toluene. The next part of this is nitration mixture. So that's going to be made in the mixer. We just crafted at HV. And then the final step for industrial TNT is going to be made in the single block chemical reactor up here. So to get nitration mixture, we need sulfuric acid, right? Sulfuric acid we're making over here next to polyethylene. And we're just going to simply manually transport this in cells. At this particular moment in time, I really don't think it's worth trying to get a pipe over there, especially since this is only for rocket construction. So this is not something we're going to be running all of the time. And besides, after we unlock applied energistics and also design the room that this is going to be in, everything will be moved down next to the rocket silo. 
And also, I just had another thought. We're going to move this maintenance hatch on the backside somewhere, like here. We need an extra space up here, which means we need to move this mixer down and the output hatch down. And this block down here needs to be solid, and the maintenance hatch is not a solid block. Yeah, and that means mixer down here and then chemical reactor below that. And then we're actually missing one more machine. I, we need a distillery. I'm sure we have one of those. We do. Look at that. We're going to use this for here. Okay, so that just leaves nitric acid. Nitric acid, there is a few different recipes. And the reason we crafted the large chemical reactor is specifically for this recipe right here. Ammonia plus oxygen circuit 24 gives us nitric acid and water. This does not exist in the single block recipes. Okay, first of all, let's look at the power situation on the back. We do have three HV machines to power and one LV. So the LV one is going to get its own gas turbine here. The two HV machines, the mixer and the chemical reactor, will be powered by blue alloy cable. And that's going to go into a battery buffer. We have a four slot version here. And we only need two amps on the line, so we only need to give it two batteries. We could give it more if we wanted to, but I don't think it's necessary. And then one gas turbine here to power the battery buffer. And one gas turbine to power the energy hatch on the large chemical reactor. And then we can also give this a tank for benzene. And a pump on the top to insert. And also plug in the cable. I almost forgot about that. Okay, so if we give it some benzene, everything should be powered. Yes, we have animation. That is a good sign. Actually, you know what? Just to be consistent, we can also hook up this gas turbine for the solidifier. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit sneaky here. So the recipe for nitric acid is ammonia plus oxygen, but first we have to make ammonia, right? And we're going to do that in the exact same large chemical reactor. It's going to run both of the recipes. So ammonia is a mixture of... Let's grab some super tanks. Ammonia is a mixture of nitrogen and hydrogen. And both of those we also make over here at benzene. This one here should be nitrogen. Let's take a tank of this. Swap it out. The hydrogen we don't make here directly, but we do make 1,2-dimethylbenzene. And this can be electrolyzed for 10 cells of hydrogen. So it's one cell of this to 10 cells of hydrogen. That, that is a very good deal right there. Okay, so the nitrogen has to go into the input hatch of the chemical reactor, which one of them is on here, top left. We also make... Actually, let's get rid of this debuff. We also make hydrogen over here via water electrolysis. I did reserve a full super tank. Yeah, let's grab this. This is just as a backup, as a reserve, for situations exactly like this. And that's going to go on the second input hatch, which is top middle. Let's clear the debuff again. And actually, you know what? Just out of curiosity, how much hydrogen do we have over here next to the electrolyzers? Because we should also produce it from... Various different things. Almost almost 2,000 buckets, that's excellent. But some of this is used to make PTFE, so we'll, we'll leave that one there. Okay, so this is where we have to be a bit careful with things. Since we're running two different recipes, we have to make sure that we lock the output hatches. The first recipe for ammonia is three parts hydrogen, one part nitrogen, and it gives us one bucket of ammonia at HV. And ammonia we should have in this chest from when I was making palladium. Yeah, we have five cells left. That is going to be locked to this to the middle output hatch here. So it goes input, 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 output, input, output. The ammonia is going to be locked to the middle one so that only ammonia can appear in this output hatch. And this is the sneaky part here. Since we need ammonia to make nitric acid, what we can actually do is point the output hatch directly into another input hatch. So if we do it like this and have them facing each other, the ammonia that's produced in the first recipe will automatically go to the input hatch of here. And that is going to be mixed with oxygen, which is going to come from this input hatch. And in fact, we should have a f like almost a full super tank of oxygen here. Uh, not quite. Yeah, water electrolysis is pretty slow. I know for a fact, though, this is full. No? It's not full? Okay. <laughs> We're going to take it regardless, though, and just swap out the super tank. So yeah, oxygen is input right here. Not there. And I don't want to insert these just yet because we need to lock the final output slot here because for the nitric acid recipe, we also get water. And as we know, if there's no space for the output, the large chemical reactor or any multi-block does void the recipe. And we can use that to our advantage here. We actually don't even need a fluid trash can if we just simply never give it somewhere for it to go. 
it will just automatically void the recipe. And we also have some nitric acid here from making palladium. So we're going to lock that into this hatch, which means only nitric acid can appear here. Okay, so to recap, we're going to have nitrogen plus hydrogen gives us ammonia right here, which is locked. The ammonia is going to automatically insert into this input hatch, where it mixes with oxygen passed from this super tank. And that recipe, I believe, is the circuit 24. So we have to give circuit 24 inside the chemical reactor. I should have that on me, right? Yes, I do. And this shouldn't interfere with the previous recipe because the previous recipe for ammonia doesn't take any circuit. So it works regardless if you have a circuit in the input. That is going to make us nitric acid and be output to the mixer where it mixes with sulfuric acid. However, we're not finished yet. <laughs> Stick with me here, guys. We're almost there. So because of the whole voiding shenanigans, we don't want to void the wrong item, right? We obviously want to trash the water, right? But we never want to trash ammonia or nitric acid. So because of the fact that you can't put two machine controllers on the same machine, like we can't have it on two different sides of the machine like this, which is something I actually just learned today. A very simple workaround for this is actually just to make sure we always have somewhere for the nitric acid to go. So I'm going to give this a super tank down here. Yeah, and we can have this just sent on potent pipe into the mixer as a fluid. I was originally going to put this in cells, but that just complicates things quite a bit. And automatic output from the super tank. However, if we back up on ammonia, we obviously do want to turn the machine off. So we want machine controller, fluid detector cover. Very similar to the way we have our oil rig. So if there's ever one bucket in here, it's going to turn off the redstone signal because it's inverted. And remember the golden rule, redstone on, machine on. So we want enable with redstone and safe mode. Safe mode protects against low benzene or no power. Okay, so now everything should be configured. All The one thing I did forget to do was send the gel toluene into, <laughs> into this chemical reactor. Uh, so we're going to have to somehow get a conduit around here. I think we can make this work though. Like we should be able to insert the side right here. It's going to be a little bit spaghetti, but remember this is just temporary. And we don't talk about this. This is behind a wall, so nobody <laughs> nobody has to know. Yeah, we, we can totally do this. Okay, this should be getting gel toluene. Perfect. Now we should be able to automatically output all the fluids. And it should just work. Right? <laughs> right? Uh-oh. Oh, I need, to, I need to enable automatic output. Okay, now it should just work. Perfect. Look at this. Okay, 16 seconds. Which fluid is it going to give us? Oh, this could be a very fatal flaw with this. <laughs> I I did think about this, actually, when I when I plugged in the super tank. Which order does this, the chemical reactor prioritize the recipes in? Yeah, like, what I'm thinking is, is it going to keep making ammonia and then it's going to stop? Because this is full and it's never going to make nitric acid, is it? Oh, hold on. I think I'm proving... Oh, wait. It works. It works. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We're getting nitric acid. What I thought to be the case, what I had in the back of my head was it prioritizes the recipe with the circuit. And that seems to be the case here. Yeah, it's making nitric acid whenever it can. And then it defaults back to the nitrogen and hydrogen recipe to make ammonia. Okay, so it's now... <laughs> I thought this thing was going to get stuck here. But no, it appears not to be the case. That's perfect. Aha! So after a little bit more configuration, we're making industrial TNT. This distillery up here, the industrial TNT recipe also gives us diluted sulfuric acid, which we can distill directly or into a portion of regular sulfuric acid, which is going to be automatically output to this tank here. And that gets filled into cells and gets passed back to the mixer. We get like 75% of it back, so most of it is recycled. And the rest we just have to make up from polyethylene. And we can also have a drawer out front here to hold the industrial TNT. And I think that completes this setup finally. That took a while longer than I expected. <laughs> and we're also out of benzene power here, so I think the chemical reactor shut off. So the second part to this implosion compressor for the heavy duty plating, remember the whole reason we actually set this thing up, is hundreds and hundreds of triple compressed plating, triple compressed bronze, aluminium and steel. And I think we need tin here as well. I realized we were going to be short on copper, so before the episode even started actually, I did move the miner on a copper vein. And most of that should be processed already through ore processing. Yeah, some of it is finished smelting here. I'll make up the rest of the triple compressed plating. However, just as a test run here, we can grab some of the steel. It should be steel and industrial TNT. This is going to be loud as well. We might have to hit this with a mallet. Oh yeah. <laughs> and we're getting compressed steel plates. Let's get a chest for this, actually. 
Then inside our HV assembling machine, compressed bronze, compressed aluminium and compressed steel along with molten stainless steel. Circuit number one should give us heavy duty ingots. This we can compress once more in the implosion compressor. And we get the heavy duty plates from Galacticraft. We need like two stacks of those, something like that. The quest will probably tell us, but one of these allows us to complete this guidance computer. Yes, 30 seconds for the recipe. Awesome, we got the rocket control computer tier one. So this is a quest, we definitely want to make sure to pick up the quest. However, we need to grab this assembling machine. And this is gonna be used for the NASA workbench. Oh yeah. Oh hey, it's only 37 heavy duty plates. And a whole lot more crafting, here we go again. <laughs> These rockets are gonna take us higher away from these creepers. Oh my goodness, they are everywhere. All right, so I've been doing a couple of hours of crafting and we're still missing a few vital pieces of gear for the oxygen equipment. Not really important, right? Let's assemble the last few pieces together here. So we've got the nose cone, two tier one rocket engine boosters. Oh, these things don't stack. And I didn't make the same mistake last time. You do actually need two boosters, even though there's only one in the recipe. Okay, there's one. That should be the quest, and the second one... The second one is actually for the lander. Yes, lander tier 1. We need a single copper plate. I knew I was missing some, some garbage here. Okay, cool, awesome. Tier 1 lander. Lots of fireworks, and hopefully the quest. Oh no, it's gonna make us make a buggy seat again. This is why we follow the quest book here. Oh, excellent. Not only that, we messed up the quest here... I messed up the quest here for the frequency module and it asks for two. We literally just use one for the lander, so we're gonna have to make another one of those. There's the quest. And also the quest for the lander. Hopefully we can get this, yes. There's the quest for the lander. Can this buggy seat be used for anything? I guess if we want to make a buggy, but it's, these are useless. Can we place this anywhere? Can we actually... Oh, it's only a crafting ingredient. All right, so as for the rocket, we need four fins. Another quest. We need the rocket control computer and the small fuel canister. And actually that should be everything here. And you know, I was thinking, since we have an appropriate place to launch the rockets, why not create some sort of an assembly room? So we have our NASA workbench in the floor here. We need the tier one lander, four rocket fins, tier one rocket engine, the heavy duty plates and the nose cone, small fuel canisters, rocket control computer, and there it is, the tier one rocket. Oh yeah! <laughs> now this thing is tiny compared to the tier 7 that I showed last episode in the creative world. But we do have to start somewhere. This is going to take us to the moon. And I think that's the only available location actually with the tier 1 rocket. However, as I said, we're still missing some vital pieces of equipment here. Namely the rocket launch pad. This is going to be a 3x3 structure to place the rocket on. And the quest. And now it's basically all of the equipment for ourselves to stay alive on the moon. First of all is a parachute. Actually, you know what? We're gonna learn our lesson. We're gonna go in order here. The first one wants us to make the oxygen mask and this is made from reinforced glass and a scuba helmet. Now I do remember way, way back in the steam tier. Is it in the steam tier? I think it's here, right? Yeah, this pollution quest gives us a full hazmat suit including the scuba helmet. And this will give us the oxygen mask. You guys might remember from a very early episode, we got some of these empty canisters, some of which I've used to craft already, and also some oxygen pipe. Some of this stuff we can use to make the oxygen gear, which should be our next quest. Oh, and there's the parachute quest. And all of this stuff goes in the equipment slot over here. So parachute, oxygen mask, oxygen gear, frequency module, which is how we actually have audio in space. Otherwise, I don't think you can hear anything. And there's, a, there's technically an optional quest over here. Yeah, gas her up to make... Oh no, that's the fuel loader. Actually, that reminds me, we do need a fuel loader. 
It must be this quest here, the Oxygen Bubble Distributor. This is a way to actually generate oxygen on the moon so that we can refill the oxygen tanks. So the oxygen equipment consists of the oxygen collector, the oxygen compressor, and finally the oxygen bubble distributor. So I believe these are the only three pieces of galactic- that's the quest. This should be the only three pieces of galactic craft equipment we need for this. However, there's also oxygen tanks, we have to be able to store oxygen. And I want to make as many of these as we can- more compressed plates. I've ran over to that implosion compressor like 10 times just making these three machines. Fortunately, we do actually have the aluminium required. And after doing all of the compressing, we have enough for eight oxygen tanks. This should be three quests, I believe. Okay, so now we do actually have to fill them before we leave. And that should give us enough time to set up oxygen production on the moon once we get there. And you can either do it with liquid oxygen and then convert it into breathable oxygen. But honestly, we already have these machines crafted. Why not just collect the air that's in the atmosphere on Earth or on, in the overworld? And we can do that very simply with a battery system here. So we have the collector collecting oxygen, sending that oxygen into the compressor, and that compresses into the tanks. And Galactocraft will automatically filter them so we can just set up a little chest here. And yeah, we're powering these via batteries. That is the same method we'll use on the moon, although I think we might want to take up a gas turbine with us. Are we out of circuits? No. There we go. We'll take up a gas turbine, and we'll need a battery buffer as well. Just the one slot should be perfectly fine to charge the batteries in. I am making up a few more batteries in this assembly machine. And of course, we'll make them lithium batteries, the highest tier available. We also want to make sure we have a decent item storage when we're on the moon, since the main purpose of visiting the moon is actually to collect its items, <laughs> not just to use our fancy new silo. So to carry the items, we want to make some compressed chests. It seems that we have enough for five. Yeah, and inside this chest, we'll fill it with everything we want to take to the moon. Most of which I'll gather between episodes, but there's one more thing we have to get today. A feathery thing. So all of these chickens, right? Who seem to always hang out on the edges. These guys desperately want away from here. And don't worry, we're gonna free them. So there's one very spe- <laughs> So there's one very specific drop we want from them, and that is the chicken equivalent to the trophy. I honestly don't know if it's affected by looting, but we do have our old vanadium steel sword. We are gonna add a whole bunch of lapis to this thing to give it fortune. Or luck, I guess it's called, in Tinker's Construct. Alright, so we managed to get looting 3 on this thing. However, now that I'm thinking about it, we might actually be better with the butchery knife. The specific uh, tool that's meant for killing animals. I'm not sure if that has a higher chance than a looting sword. Uh, yeah, and there's also that issue there. They do explode, which means I don't think all of them get affected by looting. Uh, I don't have high hopes for this, actually. <laughs> we might need way more chickens. Maybe we should try the butchery knife, just in case. I'm going to be very surprised if we actually get this. Okay, we should at least give them some seeds to breed first, before we take out the whole population. I guess maybe I should explain why we're actually doing this. So the trophy can be crafted with a feather to give a flight potion. It does only have 8 uses. However, this piece of technology we picked up from Thomcraft at the beginning of the episode for the Boots of the Traveller apparently also works for this potion to repair it, meaning that we can effectively have infinite creative flight. Creative flight in GTNH basically doesn't exist. Actually, I think you can get it with Infinity Armor, which is way, way, way down the line. I think I left a butcher- yeah, I left a butchery knife right here. I don't think Greg Tech tools work on the Thomic Restorer. But what are the chances we get it now? Oh, interesting, the stainless steel butchery knife has Luton 3 already built in. We should have used this to begin with. Okay, we have so many feather- almost three stacks of feathers, and no trophy. What are the chances one of these guys on the valley give us it? Nope. Hmm, perhaps a twilight forest chicken will give us one. Or then again, perhaps not. They must have seen me coming with this butchery knife out. Look how fast we can swim with the cloak on. <laughs> that is so cool, with the hover mode. 
I didn't know that. That's awesome. We are like miles away from the base right now looking for chicken. Oh, and Crimson Cultists, who are one shot. Nice. And a legendary Crimson Cultist. Oh, we are one shot on all of these guys. Easy. Aha, they dropped a Void Seed, Interest, and, and the Cult Leggings. Okay, I did some more searching around. I really don't think we're going to get this thing today. <laughs> that armor stand looks funny with that one. However, we successfully began the space race on a request for the Tier 7 rocket. Next episode, we visit the moon. I am very excited about where this valley project is headed. St still lots to figure out though, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next episode of New Horizons.